We, we know that the, the so, solar industry, the insulation industry, have been decimated by cuts. We need to link together the social, social justice struggles and climate change, because climate change is a social justice issue. And that takes me on. The next thing is climate justice. That's my clear cheer for climate justice. So it's, it's really important that days like today show global solidarity because that's what's essential. Because, as I said, the people who are being hit first and foremost by climate change are those who are poorest, by climate disasters, with, even within one country, the poorest suffer most. And these are the people who've done least to cause the problem. Now, in December, um, nations are gathering in Poland. They're at a really important stage of the UN climate talks, um, which is the final, uh, deadline to finalize the rule book for the Paris Climate Agreement. And we know there's a lot of obstacles, not least the US wanting to pull out, lots of governments wanting to shirk their responsibilities. But it's a really important stage. Unfortunately, it's happening in the heart of coal country. The Polish government decided that's where it should be, somewhere with very little accommodation for activists. And they're restricting, putting really harsh restrictions on protest. So I heard today that even like some um, Polish anti-coal activists said, don't come to Poland because it will give the government an excuse to crack down on us. So that may, means that it's really important that we, we show global solidarity again. So the campaign against climate change are going to, it's going to organise a rally, a um, march in London on the 1st of December. So I hope we, should, we ought to see you all there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Um, how <laughs> that really hurt me. Um, how are we doing, everyone? We're good. Yeah? What do we want? Climate justice! Yeah, when do we want it? Now! What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! Woohoo! Um, now, my next speaker was going to be Adam Woodhall. Adam, are you here? No, do I need to change this around? Now, given that I can see Mr. Shane Rattenbury standing there, I would like to invite him to come and say a few words about the struggle that he's been, well, all the great work that he's been doing in Australia and the struggle for climate action and climate justice there. So, Shane, I invite you to stand here, slightly away from the spray paint. <laughs> Well, hello, hello, friends, and thank you for that very warm welcome. welcome. I am a, the Minister for Climate Change in the Australian Capital Territory, which is one of the states and territories of Australia. And I'm really happy to join you here all today, one of uh, 90 countries where there are rise up climate events, more than 800... Hello? 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 More than 850 events across the world. We are part of that global statement today that says... As humans, we want real action on climate change. It is time governments got serious and delivered what the scientists are telling us we need to do. That's what today is all about, and that's why we're all here, and I'm really proud to join you all the way from Australia. We had more than 50 events in Australia today, because, of course, it's nine hours ahead of here, and they've already happened, including sailing a tall ship through the middle of Sydney Harbour, calling with huge sails on it, calling for climate action. They really made a strong statement down in Sydney this morning, and it's great to see this happening across the world. Thanks to 350.org. Unfortunately, it's not all good news from Australia. I don't know if any of you have been reading the press, but uh, there's been a lot going on down there, and we are facing a real struggle to tackle climate change and the causes of it, especially the fossil fuel industry. We have just seen our federal government fall. The Prime Minister was sacked for attempting to introduce what admittedly was a very tepid, yet nonetheless a climate policy. The ultra-conservatives in the government actually rolled our Prime Minister. He got sacked and they have now said they will not be taking any further action on climate change. Our new Prime Minister... Our new Prime Minister is perhaps most famous for coming into Parliament with a lump of coal and holding it up and demonstrating and saying how good it was for humanity. This is the level of debate that we are seeing in our Federal Parliament in Australia. It is deeply distressing and a challenge that all the activists in Australia are fighting hard to try and overcome. 
In Australia at the moment, we are also fighting to stop the new Adani coal mine. This is one of the largest coal mines in the world. To give you a sense of the scale of it, at full development, the actual mine itself will be the size of the city of Paris. It's, it's situated in Queensland, just inland from the Great Barrier Reef. And if the mine is fully developed, that mine alone will account for 3% of the entire global carbon budget if we're going to stay under 2 degrees Celsius. This is the sort of development we don't need. It's a sort of development we have to stop. This development, unfortunately, is being given billions of dollars of subsidies by the Australian government. This is the wrong direction. We need to get stand up against proposals like this and make sure we stop the Adani coal mine in its tracks. In terms of climate impacts, Australia is one of those countries that at the front line. Right now, well just a couple of weeks ago, the bushfire to season was declared, declared on the 1st of August. Now in the southern hemisphere, that is winter still. There is still one month of winter to go and they declared the start of the start of bushfire season across vast swathes of Australia. Because of the extreme heat that's been going on, the lack of rainfall, and the high fuel load means that we are facing the bushfire danger that early in the season in a most unprecedented and extraordinary way. So there is plenty of bad stuff happening in Australia, but there's also plenty of good things. As I said, not, there was more than 50 events across Australia today. There are activists working hard to try and turn around policy in Australia. Australians understand this. We have a massive solar rollout going on at the moment. People across the country are installing solar in their own homes because they know it will make a difference for the climate. It's an action they can take. And there is the most extraordinary amount of solar installation happening in the country. So on that side of things, things are good. The, the other thing I can report is the jurisdiction of which I'm the minister. We are, we are committed to climate action. We have committed to being 1% renewable electricity by 2020. In just 18 months' time, we will have, we've signed the contracts, the wind farms are being built at the moment, the solar is being installed, and in 18 months' time, our city of 400,000 people will be powered 1% by renewable electricity. That will also cut our greenhouse emissions by 40% below 1990 levels. And I guess we want to tell a story that it's possible. It is possible to do this. We are proof positive of what can be done if you set your mind to it. If you listen to the climate science, you believe what we're being told we need to do, you get stuck in, you make the decision, and you go forward and you get it done. And that's what's possible, 100% renewable electricity in 18 months' time. That's what we're calling for all governments around the world to do is to take serious decisions, get focused, get on and do the job on all of our behalves and save this planet from the worst excesses of climate change. So friends, thank you for being here today. Thank you for standing up for the climate. And as we leave here today, the message I leave you with is go forward and demand more. Demand more from your governments. Demand more from the corporations. Demand more from our leaders. Demand a future for our planet. Thank you very much.